Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, Lil. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. How would you like a 15% discount to my daily email, the stack of stuff, the show notes, discounts to the conference, all of that? All you need to do is text the word show to 33777. You'll get the annual subscription with a 15% discount to my daily email. You'll get the stack of stuff, the links to the show notes, discounts to the conference, and so much more. All you have to do is text the word show, S-H-O-W, to 33777. Text show to 33777. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Breaking news, the University of Pennsylvania Board of Trustees holding an emergency meeting today, possibly ousting the president of the university. You know, uh, they they did the um, the con- congressional testimony, and they've had to walk it back. The only one who hasn't is the MIT president. Both the University of Pennsylvania president and the Harvard president have released statements walking back their non sequiturs about genocide of Jews not being a violation of conduct. Now they've done, well, you know, actually calling for genocide is bad. I, I'll i get to the Trump piece, but uh, let me – Jonah Goldberg – let me read you part of this because he he captures what bothered me so much about it. I'll take your phone calls as well. If I didn't start the show, I'm sorry, rushing into this with the breaking news. It's Eric Erickson, the phone number 877-973-7425. He starts this piece. He says, it's the smirking, damn it. I, and he says that. I'm, I'm just reading his words. I can forgive the three college presidents being wrong while testifying before Congress about anti-Semitism on their campuses. After all, I can understand their predicament. They set up their social justice Shangri-Las, not realizing a simple design flaw in the contraptions they made their careers on helping to build. Like the Death Star's exhaust port or some computer's Y2K problem, these engineers of good think never anticipated that their whole intricate machine could come to a sputtering stop and collapse on itself like a shoddy submarine going too deep. And what was the sugar in the gas tank of their glorious jalopy? Jews. If some retrograde poltroon called for lynching black people, or if they simply used the wrong adjective to describe black people, the all-seeing panopticon would spot it and deploy whatever resources were required to deal with the problem. If the spark of intolerance flickered even for a moment and offended the transgendered, the Muslim, the neurodivergent, or whomever, the fire suppression systems would rain down the retarded foams of justice and enlightenment. But call for the liquidation of the Jews? Those reside outside the sensory spectrum of the system. It's ironic that the term colorblind is problematic for those institutions, such that the monitoring systems will spot any hint of it in or out of the classroom or admissions. But actual intolerance for Jews is lathered with a kind of stealth paint that renders the same systems Jew blind. Again, I understand that predicament. The receptors of the Islamophobia sensors have been set at 11 for so long, a constituency is built up around it. This constituency, which is multi-ethnic, non-denominational, and well entrenched among students, administrators, and faculty alike, sees Israel and the non-Israeli Jews who tolerate its existence as an affront to their worldview and Muslim identity. It has grown so powerful and has so distorted the debate over Israel and the Jews that calls for global intifada, Jew cleansing, and Jew shaming pass for some kind of civil right. Blaming the Jews for all manner of evils, including the shortcomings of the people who scapegoat Jews, is protected because, at a minimum, it's a personal truth, and for some, just the plain truth. But taking offense at such things is evidence of a malicious ability to understand the context. Context, after all, is there anything it can't justify? 
I was forced to leave my study group for my doctoral exams halfway through the semester because my group members told me that the people at the Nova Music Festival deserved to die because they were partying on stolen land explained Talia Khan, an MIT student, at a press conference Tuesday. She recounted how a postdoctoral student told her that Jewish Israelis want to enslave the world in a global apartheid system and falsely claim the Israelis harvest Palestinian organs. When this was brought to the attention of a DEI commissar on campus, they replied by telling us that nothing he said was hate speech and also the our organ harvesting conspiracy theory was confirmed. So once again, I get it. These college presidents are trying to maintain their composure while dealing with the unwashed adults who don't understand the rich context on these islands of sophistication and seriousness. What I cannot forgive is the smirking. It fills me with the sort of rage I've been working to edit out of my whole life. I get that being grilled by Elise Stefanik offends the sensibilities of academic Olympians, but taking the pose of a professor dealing with an obtuse but passionate student as he says something embarrassing is only remotely tolerable when the professor is right. Liz McGill, Penn's president, smirked and smiled like an impatient tutor as she explained again and again that taking action in response to calls for Jewish genocide are context-dependent. Now, as I've often said, I can respect if not necessarily completely agree with an absolutist position on free speech on campus. It's not that I'm against free speech on campus. I just think that some language can violate other principles that used to be captured in things like honor codes, which once include such atavisms as basic notions of decency, manners, and the like. But fine, I can respect the case for totally uninhibited speech. But what everybody understands is that these schools do not in any way, shape, or form actually believe in uninhibited free speech. Speech that conforms with the worldview of the ruling priests of these secular monasteries should be given free reign. Speech that pets the cat of social justice backwards elicits screeches and scratches. Behind every double standard is an unspoken single standard, and the single standard that looms like Banquo's ghost over this feast of asininity is that only the preferred narratives are privileged. This is what I think the debate about free speech is a bit of a sideshow, albeit an important one. Even the issue of anti-Semitism is a bit of a distraction. As important as I think it is, the anti-Semitism is a symptom, a horrible symptom that brings with it complications that make the underlying disease even worse. But focusing on the symptom can still lead us to ignore the underlying malady. The Howard Zinn and Herbert Marcus narrative of America's eternal sin, Mark Hughes says America was radically evil, and the Manichaean of dividing the world into oppressors and oppressed critical race theory, the witlessness of whiteness studies. The bundle of ideological commitments was, by its own internal logic, bound to produce pathologies and sociopathies like anti-Semitism. Give some of the Hamas supporters and apologists some credit. They're not all anti-Semites. Some sincerely believe that any act of resistance is self-justifying, the Franz Fanon of their imagination as opposed to the real Fanon at the end of his life, defended violence and brutality against French people and colonizers generally. In his preface to Fanon's Wretched of the Earth, John Paul Sartre wrote, When the peasant takes a gun in his hands, the old myths grow dim and the prohibitions are one by one forgotten. The rebel's weapon is the proof of his humanity. For in the first days of the revolt, you must kill. To shoot down a European is to kill two birds with one stone, to destroy an oppressor and the man he oppresses at the same time. There remain a dead man and a free man. The survivor, for the first time, feels a national soil under his foot. This continuing with Jonah Goldberg in liberal fascism, I wrote about the new left radicals drunk on these ideas when they were still fresh. Convinced that all whites were born tainted with the original sin of skin privilege, the fighting brigades of the new left internalized racialist thinking as hatred of their own whiteness. All white babies are pigs, declared one weather man. On one occasion, the feminist poet Robin Morgan was breastfeeding her son at the offices of the radical journal Rat. A weather woman saw this and told her, you have no right to have that pig male baby. How can you say that, Morgan asked. What should I do? Put it in the garbage, the weather woman answered. 
Bernadette Dorn, the acid-loving University of Chicago law student turned revolutionary, reflected the widespread new left fascination with the serial-killing hippie Ubermensch Charles Manson. Dig it. First they killed those pigs, then they ate dinner in the same room with them. They even shoved a fork into the victim's stomach. Wild! In appreciation, her weather underground cell made a three-fingered fork gesture its official salute. I don't see much difference between this and the actions of Hamas on October 7th. Or to be more accurate, I don't see much difference between this and the revolutionary heroes Hamas as useful idiot apologists see in the gang of Islam fascist fanatics. They're not Jacobin freedom fighters. They're medieval goons who would laugh uproariously as they threw every member of Queers for Palestine from a roof. Nonetheless, some things have to be believed to be seen, which is why so many Western revolutionaries with faculty parking stickers talked of feeling exhilarated when they heard of the uprising or prison break. For them, Israel is an extension of white hegemony and imperialism, so resistance to that absolves all sins. Now, I will shift back, and, and it, it's worth reading. I, I would read the whole thing, but I know some of you would send me an email, stop reading other people's stuff and just talk. But it's it's so brilliantly written, and the point here ultimately is the double standard. It is a massive, massive double standard that those groups who are preferred by the left are justified in resistance and those groups hated by the left get what they deserve. Israel is held to the standards of the West, but the people most ferociously holding it to those standards have no interest in holding Hamas or the Palestinians or really even China, Russia, Iran, or any other country resisting the West, anything like those standards. Gandhi thought the best standards of the British should be used against the British. He chose nonviolence because he thought it was the best strategy to win Indian independence. He was correct. But he didn't ask Hitler to constrain himself by similar standards. He told the British they should surrender to the Nazis and keep their principles. He advised the Jews to commit mass suicide as an act of resistance to Hitler. It's almost like he agreed with the Nazi theorist Alfred Rosenberg, who proclaimed the Germans, justice is what the Aryan man deems just, unjust is what he also deems. For a lot of anti-colonialists who can't bring themselves to believe all women if they're Jewish, justice is whatever the Palestinians say it is. It is a rank and vile double standard. And then they smirk. The presidents of the universities, they smirk. They tell us Jewish genocide is not hate speech, and only after the PR disaster. By the way, as an aside, did you know the New York Times, when they covered this, ran it as Republicans pounce? Republicans attempt to embarrass the Ivy League. That was one of the headlines. I think they embarrassed themselves. They didn't need, need the Republicans to do it. They embarrassed themselves. And now they're having to do damage control. The presidents of, of Penn and, and Harvard are out with statements walking back their under oath statements to Congress. And they're only walking back the under oath statements because of the outrage, and now they might lose their jobs. It's, it's interesting that Massachusetts Institute of Technology's president is not walking back her statement just yet, although it's probably forthcoming. Dave Portnoy of Barstool says he will no longer hire Ivy League students. These hedge fund managers and investment advisors and the like, they should probably do the same thing. Avoid hiring the Ivy League. Blacklist the Ivy League. There's nothing wrong with that. Someone, by the way, right now is, as I'm speaking, flying a banner around Harvard with a Palestinian flag it says, Harvard hates Jews. They're circling a plane is Harvard's campus right now. You can hardly blame someone for doing that, given the testimony of the presidents of the Ivy League. All of that, every single bit of that, 
the focus on the double standard and the smirking, has everything to do with Donald Trump's poll numbers. And I will explain that to you. Guys, if you're a small, mid-sized business, you're struggling with HR issues, you have employees not showing up, or you got to do a termination, you need onboarding of employees, maybe there's a sexual harassment complaint, you want an HR manager, you don't want to be the bad guy with your employees, Bambi can play the role of HR for you. $99 a month, available by phone, email, real-time chat. They do onboardings, terminations, they help your team members get to peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations, regardless of which state. They're great. Now, they're U.S.-based. They, you got somebody to talk to who's dedicated to your team. They give you access to HR expertise, and they add personal touches. So even though they're outsourced by your company, they really feel like they're a part of your team. That matters. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast. When you sign up, it'll help my show. Bambi.com, B-A-M-B-E-E.com, Bambi.com, Eric Erickson in the podcast tab. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Yes, you can, and I want to turn to a phone call. Tyler has been waiting very patiently here. Tyler, welcome to the Eric Erickson Show. How are you? Well, how are you? Good. What's going on? Uh, I was just wondering if we could get you or somebody uh, to get in the ear of DeSantis and Haley and be like, hey, why don't y'all just team up? Uh, DeSantis promised to make her VP so they can get through Trump, and then it's a cakewalk to the White House after that. And then, you know, after eight years, there's a good chance that uh, she would have an easy walk back into the White House as president if she wanted. I, I have to tell you, I get this from a ton of people. Um, why, Erickson, why aren't you talking to him? You know him. Uh, I, I've won. I, I don't think it's my place, Tyler. I, well, well, I appreciate the sentiment. It's, it's not my place. And two, I don't think they'd listen. I don't, this isn't, the only time this has ever happened was when Ted Cruz made it through a number of primaries and he and, and Carly Fiorina tried to run as a ticket to stop Trump and it did not work. And I don't think it would be effective right now. Here, Here's the problem is Haley's going up in polling. DeSantis is kind of flat in the polling. So why would she want to, she's got momentum, she thinks, be his number two. And he, why does he want her to be his number two? He probably wants Kim Reynolds of Iowa since she endorsed him in Iowa and probably going to help him win Iowa. I I don't know logistically you could make something like that work. In all seriousness, I don't know that that's a viable strategy uh, for either side right now, given the situation. Um, I, I, I just don't think that any of them right now prior to Iowa are have any willingness to get out of the race. The Haley team is convinced that she can make up ground in Iowa and win it. The DeSantis team is convinced they can win it. The Trump team is convinced they're going to win it. They are ahead in the polling. So I don't think you'll see any sort of stop Trump unity ticket like that. And um, I can't really blame them right now. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of in the, man, we need this race to consolidate uh, take out Ramaswamy, take out Christie, let it just be DeSantis and Haley, make their case uh, on the debate stages at the CNN debates in Iowa, New Hampshire. Maybe it will be in Iowa, DeSantis and Haley, and possibly Christie in the New Hampshire one, uh, given his polling there. We'll we'll see. I don't know. Uh, they're going to have to meet donor metrics and other things as well. Now, uh, your phone calls when we come back, 877-973-7425, and what the double standard on anti-Semitism on college campuses has to do with Donald Trump. Oh, yes, I'm prepared to make a persuasive case for you that it's all related. I will get to that. But first, got to tell you about Patriot Mobile. If you move your cell phone service to them, you can compound your giving to the conservative causes you care about because they're a Christian conservative company that gives to the conservative movement. Once their profits grow, they donate. So you grow their profits, they grow their giving. All you do is go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric today, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K, or you can call them 972-PATRIOT, 972-PATRIOT. 
You talk to Patriot Mobile. You move your cell phone service to them. They give you guaranteed great service using the same cell towers you are probably already using. And then, as their profits grow, they're giving to the conservative causes you care about grow. It's patriotmobile.com slash Eric or 972-PATRIOT. It's 100% U.S.-based customer service. And then if you call them, you tell them I sent you. You get free activation with my name. You get great discounts if you're a veteran, a first responder, an NRA member, a teacher. you got a lot of lines for a lot of kids. They can save you some money. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. You can go there. They've got a coverage map. Zoom in. Don't take my word for it. See it for yourself. They'll show you how great the 5G, the data, the voice is in your area. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric or 972-PATRIOT. If you call them, tell them I sent you. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson. The phone number 877-973-7425. Should you want to be on the program? Uh, JT's been sitting here for a good while. I was not going to bring up this topic, but I'm going to humor him. JT, I will address this issue. I talked about it yesterday. Welcome. Hello. Hi there. Yes. Good afternoon, Eric. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm in there. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. First of all, thank you for the breaking news on the uh, University of Penn situation. Because I'm from West Philadelphia. My old apartment building was 12 blocks from the Penn campus. Beautiful area. Um, a lot of changes going on, but a nice area to in Philadelphia. But um, I've been hearing, you know, uh, the past few days, like and like you said, you touched on it. I'm just concerned that uh, hopefully we can send troops to help Guyana out with that situation. I didn't know they didn't have a military. So, you know, I have to remember too, that there is a uh, Hezbollah presence in Venezuela. So uh, yeah, let, that's let, another area, I guess. So JT, let me okay. explain this situation to people. Um, it is, it's kind of an odd situation um, for Guyana. So it is in uh, Northern South America. It is right. uh, bordered by Venezuela. And mm-hmm. it was colonized by the Dutch and British. It is uh, part of the Commonwealth of Nations. Uh, so the British have, for the longest time, uh, protected it uh, in some capacity, even though it's now a republic and, and left the monarchy behind. It still has a cooperative relationship with them. And the Venezuela has decided to invade a national referendum, Nicolas Maduro. There is disputed territory on the border of Venezuela and Guyana, and they've decided they're going to invade. Now, how is it possible for them to invade? It's possible because the Biden administration allows Venezuela to sell oil openly, and in so doing, they have funded Venezuela's military to be able to launch this invasion. Guyana does actually have a military, the Guyana Defense Force. It's just not a large defense force. It amounts to about 4,600 people. Um, and that is the problem. Uh, it's it's just not a huge... Uh, it, it's not a huge army. It's, it's not a huge... Um, it's not a huge military. It's not a huge country. They rely on other people for help, and that's the problem. It's probably going to get invaded by. Um, probably going to get invaded by Venezuela, and it's going to set off an international chain of events in the Western Hemisphere that will drag China uh, closer in as well. And that's all because of Joe Biden's policies. It's all because Joe Biden has funded Venezuela's military ambitions by allowing them to sell oil. Can you imagine if Donald Trump did that? Can you imagine if Donald Trump were president? The media would be directly tying this to him. And that, my friends, is part of the problem here. This gets to the anti-Semitism stuff and gets me exactly where I wanted to go. 
on or about January 10th of 49 BC, Julius Caesar crossed the Rubicon. The Rubicon was a river that was the boundary of the Italian province of the Roman Republic and the Empire. The Romans had already been expanding before the Empire. But once you crossed the Rubicon, you weren't allowed to bring in an army. When you crossed the Rubicon, you were just a civilian. Rome didn't allow the military to come in. Well, Julius Caesar's military crossed, set up camp, and then Caesar crossed, provoking the Roman Civil War. Ultimately, it led to Julius Caesar's dictatorship. Today, crossing the Rubicon is considered the point of no return. Once Caesar crossed the Rubicon with an army, he was a traitor to the Roman Republic, and war was inevitable. In early June of 2013, thousands of abortion rights protesters stormed into the Texas state capitol. They wouldn't leave the building. They were there to cheer on Wendy Davis Outside, they were vandalizing the place. Inside, they were obstructing the meeting of the legislature because the governor of Texas, my friend Rick Perry, had called a special session of the legislature to pass pro-life legislation. And the way the Texas legislature worked in a special session, the business had to be done by midnight of a particular day. So the protesters stormed into the state capitol in the hour before the business had to be done and so disrupted the process of the state legislative chamber that the pro-life legislation failed to pass. The press treated it as heroic. The press lionized Wendy Davis for her filibuster. They praised the protesters for putting everything on the line, for risking jail time to go stop pro-life legislation. Ultimately, Rick Perry called the legislature back into session and got it passed a second to, got it passed in the second special session. But when it happened, they they were heralded as heroes. In 2018, learning from Texas, progressive protesters in Wisconsin stormed the state capitol there. They smashed windows, they broke through doors. They tried to grind the business of the legislature to a halt to stop the Republicans in the state legislature with a veto-proof majority from passing right-to-work legislation that would gut unions in Wisconsin. Nancy Pelosi heralded the progressive protesters as heroic, as activists in democracy. The press made a big deal about their heroism. They failed. Right-to-work passed. In 2021, Donald Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol. Like the people in Wisconsin, they were unsuccessful in their little insurrection. Unlike Texas and Wisconsin progressives, Trump supporters in Washington were and are to this day vilified for having entered the Capitol, including a lot of people who just walked in curious to see what was going on. They didn't realize they weren't supposed to be there. A big crowd had gone in. These other people went in, and some of them were charged with crimes for trespassing when they just thought, you know, back in the day, you used to be able to wander into the Capitol at your leisure. You really used to do that. I, as a kid, used to go to Washington, and i just walk into the Capitol. You didn't need an appointment. You just walked in. Grandma walked in, and next thing she knows, the FBI is calling to find out why she was there. Now, a lot of them deserve to go to jail deserve to be in federal prison. They really were trying to obstruct Congress. But so too were the people in Texas and Wisconsin who were lionized by the press. What the press miss, what the Democrats miss, is that January 6, 2021 would have never happened had Texas, Wisconsin, the Black Lives Matters riots and the like not happened. They treat Trump as some sort of unique phenomenon He's not. He's a symptom of something larger, of the breakdown of democracy, of the Democrats having crossed the Rubicon well before Republicans ever walked into Congress on January 6th. He exists as the manifestation of Republican anxieties. Republicans get anxious over Democrats and their friends in the press always lionizing Democratic villains. 
forever giving a pass to their own extremists, their own fringe rioters, their own insurrectionists. Donald Trump may be a bad man, but he's the bad man that protects other people from the they-thems and their allies, and people are okay with that. There are a lot of people, not just Republicans, but independent voters who will vote for Donald Trump, who fear him less than they do the radical fringe mob of the left, who chant death to the Jews on college campuses and demand boys be put in girls' locker rooms. But again, the problem is the double standard here. Democrats stormed the U.S. Capitol to block a vote on Brett Kavanaugh. They're courageous. Trump supporters do it to stop the Electoral College vote from being counted. They're insurrectionists. Progressives stormed U.S. Capitol buildings, the congressional offices, in a pro-Hamas rally. They're good guys. Stormed the Capitol for Donald Trump. You're a bad guy. It's either all denounceable and all condemnable or none of it is. And I think it's all condemnable. I think it's all bad. I think the insurrectionists, the the, the rioters, the people of, of January 6th who went to prison, a lot of them really did deserve it. Some of them got too harsh a prison sentence, I think. But you had a lot of people who were storming the Capitol, some of them building gallows to try to hang Mike Pence, searching for him, smashed it in Nancy Pelosi's office, pilfered the place, took it out. They're going to jail. The problem is a lot of the people who burn down small businesses in Kenosha, Wisconsin, they're not going to jail. Remember there was that that uh, man in Atlanta who shot up the Asian spa, killed the women there? We all got lectured on anti-Asian hate, and it turns out the guy was a sex addict and he was going to the Asian spa. We've never had an honest conversation about those Asian spas, have we? That uh, there, the guy was going for sex. They were essentially prostituting themselves in these places, and he went and killed women who he blamed for his sex addiction. He had come to the Lord, he said, and realized he needed to repent, and his repentance was murdering people. He was demented, twisted, sick. But the left decided it was anti-Asian hate fueled by the existence of Donald Trump as opposed to a sex addict who was demented. And they started lecturing us all on anti-Asian hate until it turned out the data showed, the FBI data showed, that the overwhelming majority of anti-Asian hate in the United States was done by young black men. Notice how we don't talk about anti-Asian hate anymore. But remember, you had that professor at the University of Colorado at Boulder who wrote the op-ed saying, well, really, yes, it's true. Uh, Black men are most likely to engage in anti-Asian violence, but it is them unleashing their own pent-up frustration for their own oppression in a systematically racist society. And they're just lashing out at other oppressed people. That's what it is trying to exercise what they view as their whiteness uh, that, that they built up under that pressure. It was, it was nonsense. And then it disappeared. Or look at what's happening with Israel. If you go on a, any college campus in America tomorrow, go to the Ivy League and you chant genocide for the trans community, you're going to be th- arrested by campus police and thrown off campus for trespassing. And if you're a student, you're probably going to be expelled. If you go on any college campus in America and hold up a sign that says George Floyd got what he deserved, you watch what happens. You know what's going to happen. The Ivy League universities are going to take action against you for deplorable conduct. If you say genocide for the trans community or George Floyd got what he deserved, they're coming for you. But you chant death to the Jews or genocide is justice. And they say it's, well, you got to put it in its context, like what Joe Goldberg was writing about. Harvard forced an evolutionary biologist among its faculty to take a leave of absence after she said on Fox News that there were only two genders. And yet, Penn, Harvard, MIT, if you say death to the Jews, they say context matters. While all of this is going on, CNN, I, I, y'all, I had it on my office the other day, yesterday. Nonstop worry about Donald Trump. Will he be a dictator? What will his dictatorship do? Are reporters going to get carted off to jail? Are people who oppose him going to get carted off to jail? The Atlantic ran a magazine story on him. Um, I get the strong sense that these people would be fine with an authoritarian dictator as long as they have a D next to their name. They're worked up about Donald Trump. They've given more coverage to Donald Trump in the last 24 hours than the presidents of Harvard, Penn, and MIT saying genocide of the Jews is not hate speech, but genocide for the trans community is. 
What's more remarkable, though, is that I get the sense that CNN and MSNBC, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Atlantic, they don't really trust the system of government we have. They don't trust the people. They don't trust the Constitution. They think unless they're in charge of it, it's bad, which is why they discredit the Supreme Court now that they don't control it. It's why they discredit the Senate when they don't have it because they don't trust the Constitution and they sure as heck don't trust you. They're fine with the double standard. They are fine with the double standard as long as the double standard works to their advantage. And that is why you have Donald Trump, because a whole lot of people in this country understand that the left is fine with a double standard against you. And so you want someone big and bad to stand between you and them. And you picked him. I get it. They don't. Now, I got to move on. Americans for Prosperity is out of the country. You know, they they have endorsed Nikki Haley, and I've gotten some blowback from people for being an advertiser, but I'll tell you why I love Americans for Prosperity. They are deeply committed to limited government. You, you, you can disagree with an endorsement of a candidate, but look at their record of what they support. They are one of the biggest proponents of school choice in the country. Are you opposed to school choice because AFP supports it? Probably not. AFP supports school choice. They support deregulation for small businesses to put small businesses at a competitive advantage to big businesses against the government subsidies of big businesses. They support tax reform, common sense tax reform for the middle class and for small business owners. They support limiting government, knowing that you're more free when government is less invasive. That's why I support Americans for Prosperity. and They are on the ground in the states fighting for conservative causes, and they want you on their team. You can go to americansforprosperity.org slash eric today. americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. Go sign up with AAP. Be part of their movement to fight for free markets and free people, to fight for limited government, to persuade your neighbors and your local government that school choice is good and deregulation is good and tax cuts are good. It's what they do. They're a do tank, not a think tank. They do the business of the conservative movement. They want you on their side. Americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. Hey, guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun, too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW group. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, uh, Chick-fil-A appears to, well, it already has gotten rid of the pimento cheese chicken sandwich, honey, pepper, pimento, chicken sandwich. Um, It's gone, and apparently people are still showing up at Chick-fil-A's wanting the sandwich, and they don't have it. I never had it. I I got a bunch of friends who went to Chick-fil-A and got the sandwich, and they really liked it. I never got it. I I have come to love pimento cheese on, on in burgers, though. I'm not – okay, so – this is this is this is the weird me. Charlie and Philip can laugh. I don't like cheeseburgers. Oh, I see you shaking your head over there. I see you rolling your eyes at me. <laughs> I like hamburgers. I, I've never liked a cheeseburger. My gosh, being in studio with Andrew, the look on his face. I don't need Charlie and Philip here to to to, to ridicule me for. I, I prefer a hamburger to a cheeseburger. But. So my buddy Woody, who's the chef at Table of Maine, it's, it's my favorite restaurant. It's it's uh, up north of Atlanta. If you ever get to Atlanta, go to Table of Maine. It, it, honest to goodness, it is just the best restaurant. Um, and he, I never got, because I really like hamburgers a lot. And so I'd never gotten the hamburger on the menu. And I'm like, all right, I'll try it. And they brought it out with the pimento cheese on it. And I was a little bit too ashamed to like send it back. So I ate it and I'm like, Wow. I can totally do a pimento cheese. I don't want to. I don't want to cheese on my. But pimento cheese is like it's not really cheese. It's pimento cheese with bacon too. Oh my gosh, it is an incredible burger. Um, 
But I, I don't know. Jalapenos and pimento cheese and honey on a Chick-fil-A sandwich was a bridge too far for me because I knew where I would have to immediately run and, and stay. And there's not enough toilet paper in the world after eating something like that for me. But nonetheless, I digress. Hello, it is Ryan. And we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.